Now, I know you're wondering when I'm going to start talking about music. We all want to make these hits. We all want to be in the studio. We all want to travel and, and make an abundance of wealth for our families. But I'm here to tell you something. There was a saying that the Marines used to have. It says, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Well, well I'm not going to use that. That's a little dark, okay? My saying is, start right, you end right. Start wrong, and things can go wrong. See, I know you've heard stories about artists making millions of dollars, selling millions of records, and going broke. You hear these stories time and time again, and you say, this could never happen to me. Never, ever, ever happen to you. Well, let me tell you something. It happens. And it usually happens because you haven't taken the time to set up your infrastructure. So on this episode today, that's what we're working on. Setting up your business infrastructure so that you can get paid. Let's start here with those questions. In the last episode, I asked you to answer six simple questions. The first question is, who am I, right? See, you may have came up with a name or a catchy phrase or something of the sort. Great. If it's your name, that's even better. That is your brand. You are your brand. And you have just created your first piece of intellectual property. Now let me tell you a horror story here. As soon as you find that name, what you need to do is you need to go out onto every avenue and secure it. That means you may need to consider talking to an attorney and creating a trademark. You need to go online and search for the domains. You need to go through and Google this name to make sure that there's no one else using your name because your name will end up being your entire business, your brand. When you type into Google, when you speak to Siri, when you're branding your, or marketing yourself as a musician from this point forward, this name will be your business. Do not make the same mistake that I made. True story. I had been producing music and art under the name of Every James for years. Haphazardly, as I was building my company, I never considered going in and doing a complete name check. So I was releasing music on Spotify, iTunes, uh, all over. And one day, to my horror, I look in and I find that there's another artist who saw that I was gaining traffic who hijacked my name to direct music and traffic to their websites. I was horrified. And believe it or not, until this day, I am still clearing my name. Let me tell you a second example that almost ended my career. I built 735 Music from the ground up. We started this company in the year 1999-2000 in my father's basement. And at that time, I secured a domain name, 735music.com. After a few years, I allowed that domain name to go dormant. Years later, I secured my first publishing deal. And I already had my company registered as a publisher with BMI and it was time for me to start a website. To my horror, I found that a Chinese company had bought my domain name and was holding it for thousands of dollars. I had to wait five years before I was able to secure the name of my business. That is why I am telling you right now as soon as you define who you are, that first question, who am I, and you come up with your company name or you decide to use your own name as your professional name, go and secure it. Do whatever you can. Check it out in every avenue. Even have an attorney do a search for you if you have the, the funds. 
but make sure that you secure your brand first. Okay, now that you secured the name, now it's time to secure this bag, all right? I get annoyed when I talk to young entrepreneurs and I ask them if they have a bank account and the answer is no. Next thing I say is, well, how the hell am I supposed to pay you? Um, let's go ahead and jump into the subject of setting up your business by first saying, um, I am not an attorney. I'm not an accountant. I suggest that if you're serious about this, that you seek out the, uh, to consult with an attorney or an accountant to help you go through this process. Um, that could be one of the most valuable meetings you ever have in your life and these people can turn out to be some of the most uh, uh, helpful people that you'll encounter when doing business. Um, that being said, I'm going to jump into a lot of these subjects. First thing I'm going to tell you to do is to take that name you came up with and create your business entity. Okay, You have to make a decision whether or not you want to be a sole, entrepreneur, uh, sole proprietor or if you want to go into being a corporate entity such as an LLC or an S Corp. Okay, now here's the difference. A sole proprietor is using their social name and social security number to do business, which makes them personally liable for anything that happens within that business. While a corporate entity is looked at as a separate person than you. It allows you to do business um, and have limited liability for any issues such as being sued or if you say you go bankrupt, the bankruptcy won't affect your personal business or your personal life. You understand? Uh, it's a separation if you wish. I chose to set up an LLC and uh, I, you can do that very easily by going online and looking at your, uh, there's several options for you to start your, your you know, business right there. Or you can go to an attorney and have them file the perfect, you know, set up all the paperwork for you and uh, walk you through the process. Um, I'm impartial to either side, once again. Now, once you've created this LLC or this business entity, the next thing you will need to do is create a EIN number and what this EIN number it'll be the um, social security number for your business this is the number that you will then use to identify that business with from that point forward okay now I believe you can just go straight to the uh, IRS to get that fairly cheap really easy to do once again, your attorney or your accountant can help you do that as well. Uh, the next step that I like to do, once I have my LLC name filed and I have my EIN, now it's about time for us to take a trip to a bank. Um, I suggest a different bank. Once again, if you've started a corporate entity, a separate bank account from your personal account somewhere else um, find a, a, a bank that is trusted me personally I like banks that have uh, international access just in case I decide to travel and want to see do business with people in other countries I like to see that the bank that I chose for my business has the ability to be used in around the world and in different countries but if you're a local business, you may choose to use uh, uh, um, some kind of uh, credit union of sorts, which give you incredible benefits. But whichever you choose to do, find a bank and take your LLC name, your EIN number, you need uh, your where do I do this answer because they're going to ask you for a business address and maybe a business telephone number 
and if you have one a business website or you know and you'll go into the bank I suggest going in with a, a, a deposit or, or you know it could be any as much as you would like and set up a business bank account yes um, when you go in you can say hey I would like to take X amount of dollars and deposit it into an account in your bank and start a business account. Here's a hack though that I wish someone would have told me. With that same deposit, you can go into the bank and start a business bank account. You can then ask them to take a portion of that deposit place it into a secured credit card. Now, what they'll do is they'll take whatever amount of money that you've offered them and they will put it into a form of savings, maybe a CD, and then issue you a credit card with the name of your business and your name on it. And use the money that you deposited into the CD as collateral to help you build your first business credit. Now, I wish someone would have told me this earlier in my career because I didn't understand the importance of business credit or what you're able to do. Business credit is completely different from personal credit in the way that it works. Um, while they're similar in how you have to pay and how you build it, the differences is are Sometimes with business credit, they're able to give you more leniency with percentage rates and sometimes even loan more money. Um, even how you qualify for business credit is different. But you have to start it somewhere. My, I learned this secured car technique from real estate. I saw several realtors recommending that, that new investors and home buyers use this method to start getting more credit offers and to build stronger credit profile. Now these secure cards may have a higher APR, but the goal is to never open up the card and use more than you have in savings or that you can pay back off of your revenue. So the key is to start your business card the same time you start your business account, the same time you start your business so that they all may mature together. Now, I wish someone told me that. Now, now that we have our business name, our bank account, and our credit active, we can start linking all of our payment methods together. Now, nowadays, there are a lot. You got Cash App, you got Apple Pay, you got Fimo, you got whatever else you can think of, PayPal. You have all these ways of accepting money. As soon as you get your bank account active, we want to take that same name and claim as many of these payment uh, methods as possible so that we have every way to accept payment in forms. I use several different types of things to do this. Uh, you know, there, there are so many ways to get paid. And what I also like to do is I like to uh, go in and maybe check out certain services to keep up with my money right from the beginning. Because if you start right, you end right. So programs like Mint.com, Intuit Products, which are awesome. Maybe you like to use uh, Excel spreadsheets. However, you set up your accounting systems and, and your payment methods. I like uh, another one that I like to use in my business a lot is uh, Square products. I, I've, I've seen to be having great, great uh, experience with them. But the whole object is, is right here in the beginning to take this time before you go out and, and attempt to do business to set up your infrastructure so that you're able to accept the abundance that you're worthy of. What you don't want to do is to get out here unprepared and, and to start doing business dealings and not have this infrastructure set up properly. And then on the back end of this, 
have to clean up huge messes and terrible situations because you forgot to take a step. Once again, I'm going to pressure this on this episode over and over again because I believe that a lot of people think that it's uh, too expensive to invest into uh, professional help. I'm going to advise you that maybe it's smarter to find a qualified professional to help you do this so that you don't miss any steps. There are attorneys that are out here that will help you. There are accountants and CPAs out here that will help you. There's several several of them that offer these, these services pro bono. I suggest learning about it and if you're not willing to take the time to learn then to hire someone to help you set up this part of your business. Please don't find yourself after the fact wishing, hoping, dreaming that you you would have just taken a little more time setting up your business infrastructure before you jumped in this pool. It, it will help you so much.